The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to properly set up a document so that you can make sure that your headers and footers are on the appropriate page. Most of the time when I'm creating a document, the first thing that I do is I am working in a regular screen. And I'm looking at my top tabs. I'm typically starting off with the home tab. What I do here is I want to make sure I add a cover page. I like for my documents to look professional, and so that's what I start with. The first thing I do is I click on insert. I like to add a cover page, so I look in the pages group and I click on the drop down arrow beside cover page. Here I typically go through and I find some type of setting or image that looks acceptable to me. In this case, I'm going to just click on banded today. I'm going to give the document a title. I'm going to call it research. And the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a page. You can see in the bottom left side of my screen that I have page one of two visible. As I scroll down, you'll notice that the second page is present. What I'm going to do here is I want to make sure that whatever I create is not going to have a disconnect between, between the first page and the next section. The best way to do that for me that I have found is to make sure that I click on layout. And when I click on the layout tab, I'm looking in the page setup group. The command I'm looking for is called breaks. When you click on the drop down, you can see that there are several options. My recommendation here is to click next page because it's going to break this section to the next section. This keeps everything clean, separate, and making sure that one section of headers and footers doesn't interfere with the next ones. So I click on next page, and at this point, I'll notice that if I were to double click in this top space, I can clearly see I have a page header, a first page header with a section two. If I were to look at the top, I can see that that is section one. So I notice that they're separate, but we have an issue here. This section two first page header is actually linked to the previous section. I don't want that. So I wanna click on link to previous and it will now unlink this section two to the previous section. So the two won't be connected. I'm going to therefore add in a section title. I like for mine to be centered and I'm going to call this research report. And I'm just going to just double click in the blank space. You can see now I have my first page, which is different. And this is my second section. And you can see at the bottom left, I'm on page two of two. The next thing I'm going to do is double click on the footer section of page two. I can clearly see here that section two of my footer is still linked to section one. And that means that whatever I put here is going to be present in this section and vice versa. So I want to disconnect this section two from the previous. Therefore, I click link to previous and it breaks that link. So I'm going to just put in this information. I'm going to say um, by Tisha Alford. And then I'm going to tab over and I like to put in page numbers because again, I want to make sure that my document has relevant information and it's set up the way that I desire. In this particular case, typically what I do is I use the automatic settings in the document. And in the insert section, I'm going to take a look at the text group. And more specifically, I'm gonna click on the drop down for quick parts. By doing that, I like to add a page number in and I'm gonna to go to field. I wanna make sure that I'm inserting a page number. So I'm gonna look in this section on the left that says field names. Here, I'm just gonna press a P for page. I then look over to the right. I look under field properties. I see format. I click on one, two, three, and I click on that. Well, obviously I'm disappointed because it's gonna start with a page zero. I don't want that. What I'm gonna do is highlight this number zero. You're gonna right click it, and you're gonna select format page numbers. And you can see that when I look 
at the page number format dialog box, my attention is drawn at the bottom to where it says page numbering. Here you can choose to continue from the previous section, which I don't. I want to be more specific and say this is my page one. And so I'm going to click on zero and it's going to update that information. And so when I add in the next section, it's going to update with relevant information. So I'm here. My goal now is to add in a table of contents. This is just generally how I set up my document. Again, the first page, I have a cover page. The second page, I want to make sure that I add a table of contents. Therefore, I'm going to go to the references section. And here, I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to select the second one for automatic table of contents. When this shows up, it's giving me this information about creating the table of contents. I'm going to click OK to select the default and I'm going to move forward. So again, I'm still at page two of two. At this point, my thought is that I'm going to add in another section. I may want to continue with this particular header and footer, or I may want it to be different. If you know that you may not want a header or footer in your table of contents, what I suggest you do is to add in a page break. It really makes a world of difference so that if you make any modifications in your document, as long as you properly set this up with the page breaks, you won't run into an issue with that information flowing into a section where you don't want it to appear. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the layout tab. Here I'm going to make sure that my cursor is at the end of the table of contents. And now that I've verified that, I'm going to again look in the page setup group and I'm going to click on the drop down for breaks. Now again, I'm going to select next page. And that's because now I can see I have page three of three. But I want to make sure that this section is a section three. So I double click on the header and there it is. I'm really excited because this is section three. And now I'm going to decide that I want to change this particular header. You'll notice that research report is present because this is linked to the previous section. So before I make any modifications, the first thing I need to do is unlink to previous. So I'm going to click link to previous. And at this point, I can see that this is section three. It no longer has the link to the previous section. Therefore, I can make a modification and I can now say something like um, quality report. And I'm going to just add in quality report research, just so you can see that this is different. I'm going to double click in the body of the document and I'm going to go back and look to verify that the research report is still present in section two. And you can see that this clearly says section two. And in this particular case, I want the same footer that is in the table of contents to be present in this area. If I choose not to have that same data present, then I need to make sure that I click in this section and unlink it from the previous section. I do want it to continue. But one of the things that I notice, and you're always paying attention to the details in the beginning, is that this page number is not looking the way I desire. I want it to continue the same number from the previous footer section. Therefore, I'm going to leave it linked because this will stay the same throughout the rest of my document. Again, if I wanted it to be different, I would unlink it. And I'm going to highlight the number one. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select format page numbers. When I do that, I'm going to say, hey, continue from the previous section and I'm looking in the page numbering area. There, I'm going to click OK. You can see it's going to automatically update and is continuing the data from the previous section. I'm going to do one more just so you can see what's going on here. Um, I'm going to also add in, I'm going to add some text just so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to add a header. I'm going to put in heading one. And I'm going to say that this is about information literacy. So what I'm noticing here is that as I've gone in, I've double clicked on this particular section. I see I'm in section three. What I recommend is that once you get to this part of the document, 
you're going to notice that I have page three of three. What should happen now is for you to insert another page. And the best way to do that to ensure consistency and the carryover of this same footer, you need to go ahead and click on the Layout tab. You want to look in the Page Setup group again. We're going to look at the Breaks command. And when we click on the drop down arrow, we're going to select Next Page. And when we do that, it's going to add in the same header information. It will continue with the page numbering as what you saw in the previous section. And I'm going to add in media data. And so I'm going to want to make sure that this is set up as a heading two. And by doing so, I'm going to go back to my table of contents and I'm going to update that information by selecting update field and it updates the table with the relevant data. Now, for the last piece of this, what I'm going to do is add in one more section where I add in a different header. I want to keep my footer the same. And in this particular case, I'm just going to go back to the layout tab. I'm going to look in the page setup group. I'm going to click on the drop down beside breaks and I'm going to click next page. By doing this, what I'm going to do now is to unlink from the previous section. So I'm going to double click in the header area. I'm going to select link to previous. And you can notice that I now have a section six. And so at this point, I can call this uh, research tools or I'm going to say tools for research just so that you can see this. And I'm going to click in the middle. And again, you're going to notice that the page numbering stayed the same. The rest of the document stayed the same. And I'm going to just type in something now like fonts. And by doing that, I'm going to add in a new heading. Again, I'm going to go back to my table of contents and I'm going to update it just so that the flow of the document stays consistent and professional looking. So I'm going to click OK again and I can see the fonts has taken place. Now, the question that was posed to me is, how do you remove the table of contents from the previous section? My statement to you is that what you really should do is make sure that you go to page layout and throughout your document in the relevant spaces, you need to make sure that you go to breaks and click a next page and make sure that your content is on a separate section break. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and remove the research report. I don't have to have a header saying research report. And once that header is removed and I double click in the document, I'm going to update again just because I like to do that as long as I have the table of contents. I'm going to update the entire table. When I click OK and I look, I'm going to notice that everything remains consistent. The flow stays consistent and the cover page stayed the same. So that is the answer to how I use the header and the footer. And that's how I go about making sure that I don't have a header on the contents page. And if I didn't want the footer there, I would just make sure I have a section break. And I also would make sure that it is not linked to the previous section. If you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks for listening.